Bumblebee tuna. It's sand. Just when you thought you'd seen it all. Pretty sure it plays right over the top of this odd looking basket across that road through the pavilion. Okay. What's going on everybody? Welcome back. I'm out in Western Kansas designing a disc golf course. And usually when I do that, I like to hit up local courses, uh, other courses in the area, just to play some disc golf. Out here at Barnard, Kansas, just saw the, actually just saw a basket from the road and thought, hey, let's just jump over there real quick on my way home, check out the course, play it. And I'm on a hole one and it's very interesting already. This is the tee pad. We got a massive building right here. I think it's the community center. This is what the tee signs look like. We have a little tree over there that has a Mando arrow on it, I believe. Thank God for you disc, right? Because at least that'll tell me where I need to go and all of that. So yeah, hole one is 362 feet. It's a big, massive right to left shot. Basket's actually way over there, but I have to throw it this way past the building. Very interesting to, to say the least, but here we go. Yeah, and there's a parking lot out there too. Oh, I think that's okay. All right, well, big blind hyzer, there's a parking lot over here. Thankfully there's nobody in it. Just got a little approach into this green. Almost off the tree. Next tee that way. Okay, hole number two is 361 feet down there. Nice flex forehand if you got it. Uh, I'm probably just gonna throw something straight and see what happens. You got a building here on the right. Hopefully nobody comes out of that door. Look at that wind. Just sit. Okay, that's gonna give me a long look. Not enough wind to lift it though. Hole three, 385 feet. Somewhere up there. I think it's up there on the right. Got quite a bit of a headwind here. Hook up. Yeah, got all the way through that tree. Gave myself kind of a look, maybe. Just gonna continue hitting baskets. Okay, hole four, 272, not much in the way. Just trying not to go a little long here. Yeah, play. Five. Hole number five, 490 something straight ahead down the hill. Looks like got a little road over here. It's probably out of bounds. You got a cedar row here. It probably acts as out of bounds. And we've got a headwind. Let's just go that way. The tree in the middle. I'm gonna try to kind of go to the right side of it and let it hyzer in. Try. Or we'll just try to go over the top of it, which we did. Hopefully that's past where the road turns. We'll find out. Plenty of room. Plenty. Plenty. Easy three. Almost out the back. Hole number six, 197 feet. There she is right there, a little left to right mover. The one thing I don't like about this hole is that is hole seven going that way. So, I mean, obviously it's a small town and small course. 
So you could probably get away with that kind of stuff, but at the same time, if you're hosting any tournaments out here, stuff like this just cannot happen. So, I mean, it's a nice day and I'm the only one on the course. So, I mean, that does say something. That doesn't excuse this type of stuff when you could easily put the basket over just behind the trees on the right and maybe move this tee up there. But comment down below what you guys think about this. Does your local course have courses like this where you're kind of crisscrossing fairways and, and, and whatnot? I get it, it works some places and it doesn't others. Uh, Western Kansas, it must work because it's here. But either way, 197, we're gonna go forehand. Not too bad. I'm a forehand player now. Park job. Also the conversation we were having on the tee pad about how safe or unsafe a course is. That's whole 10's tee pad. That's, <laughs> that's 10 feet. I don't know how I feel about that. Hole number seven, 600 and some odd feet way up this hill. Just watch out for people throwing hole six. Big ol' par four, let's go. Got a Mando up there on that right side. Not bad, not great, but not bad. All right, up here on the left side, I can see the top of the pin, kind of just straight through this gap right here. Just gonna go midi right at it. Yep, should be good. Went a little long. That is a massive pile of rock, sand, something. Hi, should put an alternate basket up here, why not? Now I got rocks in my shoes. All right, hole number eight, 315 feet. I don't see the basket, but I'm guessing it's up right behind those cedars somewhere. I'm just gonna go a little stall hyzer at it. I'm gonna try to throw it 315 feet, see what happens. That might've been a little long. Hurry. Well. I don't know, we'll see. Maybe a touch long, but can't make it if you're short, am I right? 315 and I went about 40 long. Not bad though. What a catch. I don't know what kind of baskets these are, but that was way right. On to nine. Hole nine, 232 feet. Not a lot in the way. Nice little ace run. Emac Judge. Should be good. Birdie. Hole number 10 is 400 feet. Just straightforward, really. You got the road here on the left. The golf course is up there on the right. Hole six's basket is 10 feet from me right now. Thankfully, nobody else is out here. Sorry if I sound like a broken record with that, but safety is one thing that we really have to take into consideration when designing these courses. And this would never fly on one of my courses. Hopefully, it wouldn't fly on one of yours if you're an inspiring course designer as well. Let me know. Come back. Not sure where that went, but it'll be fun. Fought through a little under the corner of this tree. Not a bad birdie. I'll take it. T sign says 14, but the T pad says 11. We're talking 240 feet. There she is. Another little ace run. Really haven't had a good ace run today, so.
Never had a chance, but at least it was online. All right, hole number 12, 315 feet. It's kind of straight through this gap and a little bit of a flare skip. Two things I do not like about this hole right away. Water fountain, sidewalk with, uh, yeah, those little stations that people like to walk and do stretching and do calisthenics or whatever it is. Once again, small town, I get it. However, we still gotta be better. I think I'm gonna throw something hard, flat, low, get a little bit of a skip. I do encourage people, if you do have a course like this, and there are people utilizing the sidewalk, the water fountain, whatever it is, just be courteous about it. Give them the right of way because they have just as much of a right, if not more, to be here than we do. So please keep that in mind when you're out playing a course like this. Big skip. Big skip. Yeah, that should be good. The sidewalk kind of turns blindly beyond the corner. Same flight as the disc, so can't really see if anyone's back here, so just be careful. That's all I ask. Hole 13. 286. Yep. Five more holes. Hole 14, 268 feet. Oh, that branch. I guess it's just a birdie. These baskets catch, man. Low, left, high, right. Not bad. Hole 15, 275. Emac judges just fly so straight, so good. Pick up the Supreme one on October 10th. Why not? Just when you thought you'd seen it all. Hole 16, 334 feet. Pretty sure it plays right over the top of this odd looking basket across that road through the pavilion. Okay, not my favorite. Thankfully nobody's around, so I'm gonna play it. I'm not sure, this basket says 18 on it, but I don't know. I don't know what's going on, guys. This is weird. Oh my gosh, that was so stinking close. Over the weird basket, through the pavilion over the sand volleyball pit. I did almost ace it, that would have been cool. But still guys, one of the worst I've ever seen safety-wise. Like logist logistics, how does this even work? How, like, just, oh, I'm dumbfounded, I'm blown away. <clears throat> like, how do you even get that approved? Most courses I've ever dealt with, you gotta get approvals on majority of the holes, especially in a public park. It just seems like asking for trouble. Hole 17, 305. I think I'm gonna try this low like skip shot. There's low, get the skip. I think I hit that tree on the last part of the skip, but it'll be fine. One more hole, let's see what they got lined up for us. Hole 18, 693 feet. Plays through this soccer field. 
around the corner past the sidewalk up by the parking lot, kind of over by where hole one was. All right, 600 some feet. Let's try to three it. It's a good start. Let's see what that leaves us. All right, there she is. Time to throw my favorite shot in disc golf, the turnover. And I turned it too much, but it came back. That's a putt. Larnard, Kansas. <clears throat> All right guys, there it is, we're done. Usually I really enjoy most of the courses that I stop and play while I'm traveling. Not that I didn't enjoy this course or this round, but, oh, these are those disc nation baskets. That's what they are. I knew I'd seen them before. Either way, usually, like I said, I do enjoy it. Not that I didn't enjoy this course. I just, I tend to get a little stressed out when I see big safety issues inside of a course design, much like we see here. There is some mandos that kind of help with it, but they're just arrows on a tree. There's no signage. U-Disc is great because it has every single hole that the signs themselves that they have, some of them are wrong, but they do have the painting on uh, each one of the T-pads that indicates which hole you're on, which is good. And U-Disc is great, but in my opinion, they need better signage out here to help with not just flow of finding the holes or describing what you're doing, but help provide information for the people that are utilizing the sidewalks out here, caution flying disc signs. Just let them be aware of the fact that there are disc golfers out here, that there could be some potential discs flying in if you're gonna to continue to have this course the way it is. I think it could be redesigned to be a, um, a good course, not that it's not good now. I do believe it could be redesigned to be safety being the number one priority, which is, in my opinion is and should be the number one priority when it comes to course design. But there you have it, guys. That's a quick casual round with me. I haven't done one of these in a while. I wanted to bring you along. Thanks for coming and listening to me rant about course design and safety and all that fun stuff. I appreciate you guys. Please like, please subscribe. Got a lot of cool things in the hopper coming up here soon. Uh, headed to Atlanta soon for NRPA. I'll be at USDGC for a day, then up to Maine to do uh, a couple ribbon cuttings on some courses that I designed up there. So I'm going to bring you guys along with me for that trip and that journey as well. Cannot wait for it. Really looking forward to it. Appreciate you guys. We'll see you on the next one. I found this link on the course. No name, no nothing. It's in 18's basket if you guys want to come get it. Okay, bye.